So it's Black History Month, and this year has been a pretty wild year for black Under, people, right? Understatement of the year. <laughs> <laughs> but there's been a lot of like Black Lives Matter. There's been a lot of negativity, um, mm. and also there's been a lot of stuff that's you know brought to light some of the issues that black people have faced that um, maybe wasn't so much at the forefront in a lot of people's minds. For sure. So whatever your background is, mm. this video is really just about showing how in our personal journeys we've overcome adversity, overcome the limitations that people have placed on us. Mm. And if that sounds like something that might encourage you or somebody else that you know, then keep it locked to the end of this video. Welcome to Reason to Behold. We make podcasts, videos, blogs to help you live God's way in all areas of your life. I'm Tolly Talks. Arnold Reasons. And if you like these kind of videos and that's something you're into, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And like it, share it, all that good stuff on the socials. Perfect. So let's get straight into it. So Tolly. Straight into it. Wow. Talk to us. Who are you? What's okay. your background? Okay. So my name is Tolu, aka Tolu Talks. Come on. Um, I am originally Nigerian, so I was born in Nigeria and I moved here with my parents when I was two years old. Um, so both my parents are still together, so grew up in a two-parent family. Um, we first moved to London. We were like, my mum calls it wretchedly poor. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was so bad because, so my parents in Nigeria, my mum is a lawyer uh, my dad is an engineer, so two of the big four, as you can tell by being Nigerian. Mm. Um, but then when they came to the UK, they literally had to start everything all over again. Mm. So they both went back to school and had to, yeah, start from scratch. Mm. Um, so there was a lot of unemployment, a lot of a lot of hard times. Um, but yeah, thank God we kind of we made it through to the other side of that. Um, and yeah, so now I work um, for a telecoms company. Um, I work as an insight manager, so I manage a team of analysts. And yeah, that's kind of me. Oh, and I've just started a business, which I'm Come working on. on at the moment. That's right. Arnold Reasons. Right, so my background is, my I'm originally from Uganda. I was born in the UK, but my parents, my heritage and everything else comes from Uganda. Um, I grew up in a single parent household. Uh, my mum and my dad broke up pretty early on, I think before I was three years old. And yeah, I think growing up, they started out obviously in Uganda and they managed to get over here. When they were in Uganda, mom was like, she was really doing bits in business. Um, so she really built up a, a, a good, a good platform for so herself. So that's where you get it from. I yeah, see man, you. It's, it's, it's inherited. It's, okay, it's I see it. you. Like, it's just all. It's in the genes. It came down inheritance okay. and that. So, so yeah. So she built all of that up. Mm. Um, and she was able to use what she built up to get from Uganda over to the UK. Okay, okay. Um, but similar to your parents as well, when she got here, she had to start again from scratch. Um, and so she didn't push forward into business. She actually got into working and stuff like that, built her way up. Mm. Um, and yeah, she just did the best that she could, um, mostly by herself, just to raise myself and my older sister and make give us the best opportunities in life. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where I've come from, grew up in East London, um, surrounded by kind of what you can probably think of in East London, Canning Town. Once upon a time I was gang, but no, I wasn't. Gang. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's where I'm from originally. Um, okay. and yeah, so now currently I'm working in the financial services world and I'm a head of compliance. And so I've Big definitely been on a bit of a, on a journey, mm. um, but yeah, by God's grace, I've been able to to make it through beyond mm. the limits. Mm. And I think one of the interesting things, right, is about like success and how you, do you, do you define that, right? Yeah. Because I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm very conscious of the fact that I don't feel like I've made it. Yeah. If you get what yeah. I mean. Yeah. And so like when we talk about success, I'm not saying like, oh, I've made it and I've yeah. arrived. I'm saying actually I'm on that journey yeah. and, you know, it's a progressive thing. Um, but I think when I look back over it and I think from where I started to where I am now, mm. that's where for me the success is, is that actually you can see change and yeah. you can see growth and that we're in a better place yeah. than kind of our parents were at this stage or, you know, yeah. we kind of built on what they were able to do. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's interesting hearing you say that because one of the things that, and I'm probably sure you're going to say you felt the same way, but knowing the journey that my mom has come from and our parents have come from, in leaving um, mm. their their homeland mm. to come to a completely foreign land. They did everything that they could 
to you know take us to a certain extent mm. and i feel like there was a certain mm. it wasn't a pressure but it was almost like a, the baton was passed on to say okay yeah. we brought you this far so you, we want you to, to go, go further, further. um <clears throat> and so so yeah and i feel like there was always something motivational and kind of that just yeah it, it drives you in a sense it's like for me it's a sacrifice yeah right? so like when I look back over the sacrifices that my parents made, yeah. like, so in Nigeria, my parents were both very qualified. Yeah. And then when they came to the UK and they were doing their studies and stuff like that, mm. like they had to work in jobs that if people in Nigeria heard the jobs that they were working, yeah, yeah. it would Same be like here. shame on the fact, do you know here. what I mean? They'll say you left all do, of this to go to, to, go to do that, <laughs> you know? And like the places that, so for me, it's that sacrifice and, realizing what my parents really gave up mm. you know and then for me to then not you know make it worth it for them I think that was that would have been really really bad for me mm. um because I remember there was a time actually where both my parents were working night shifts so mm. I think one of them was I might this might be a total lie where they're actually <laughs> working but I know that there was a time where both my parents were working nights mm. and I think one of them was working in like a post office or in like a sorting office. Mm. And I think the other one was in a pharmacy. This mm. is where it might be a lie. So sorry if it's not true, but <laughs> they were both working nights. And they get the picture, to, get the picture. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> bigger picture. <laughs> but they had to leave like me with my sisters in the house, mm. you know, and that was a really big thing for them, mm. you know, because these are their kids. So, mm. and we were living like in East London, like we yeah. were living in, in a council flat, like yeah. it was the gets, like it was <laughs> <Yeah>. ghetto. <laughs> But, you know, but these are some of the sacrifices that they had to make for us. And, mm. and yeah, it's just like that for me, seeing how they were and yeah. seeing what they went through, it really built a lot of resilience, I think, for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I, I 100% agree because even when I think back on seeing my mum growing up, like she literally burnt the candle on both ends, man. Mm. Like mm. she'd be up the earliest and back the latest just because she's out there trying to do the best that she can in order to basically give us the best opportunities in life. So I remember seeing how she again was doing those early morning shifts, mm. um, going to work before I'd even woken up and stuff like that and coming back late in the evening. And I think it's, even though she never sat me down and said to me, okay, son, this is what I'm doing. These are the sacrifices I'm making. They're just things that I guess I observed even as a child. And, you know, it, it, it set a standard in a lot of mm. ways. And I think even outside of that, also seeing how at different points she was faced by things that she had never dealt with or never be, never even saw herself overcoming, but being able to see her standing resilient and overcoming those sorts of situations mm. as well kind of set the pace for me. And I think especially mm. the moment that my mum surrendered to God and became a Christian, I was around seven, eight years old, mm. I remember distinctly noticing how much of a change there was in her, wow. even in terms of how she dealt with um, difficult situations, because prayer was now the thing that the she thing. went to with confidence. Yeah. Um, and I know that that set a really, really good foundation for me, because when I look at myself now, like I'm, I, it's not even a cocky thing, but it's more of a God confidence thing mm. where I genuinely don't believe there's anything <laughs> I cannot do. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that I'll get it first time, no. but I believe if I was to put myself to something for enough time and, you know, trust God through the whole process, mm. I genuinely like, I'm, I'm a big dreamer like that. And I think it's that kind of stuff that I saw in my mum in my childhood that in a lot of ways just became a part of the way that I saw life and how I think. And I think it's one of the things that really has set me up. And I think, because something I always forget, right, is that when my parents first came here, there was a lot more racism. Yeah. Right? It's not like it is now where stuff is talked about, you know, they have, you know, diversity targets. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like that back nah, then. Not at all. Right? So what our parents really made it through, sometimes it's not really until you get a bit older that you look back and you realise this is the sacrifice that yeah. they made. This is the environment that they were in. Yeah, yeah. So then, you know, as I'm growing older, my, my parents are telling me stories, right? So my mum has this story of when she went for a job interview, mm. right? The guy, he was part of like a different kind of church. I don't know if it was like a, like a hooky church or what. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he said to my mom, like when you came in, there was this white light around you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, and I took your, I took the names back to my church yeah. and we all prayed. 
and yours was the name that was chosen. Wow. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> like, you know, these things all build like a history yeah, with yeah, God in yeah. terms of, and um, you know what you say about like, there's nothing that we can't do. Mm. You know, like I've seen God take us from like, yeah. Oh, just places, <laughs> yeah. you know, and like debt and all yeah, of those yeah, kind of things yeah. to really good places. And so it's the same thing for me. I'm like, there's nothing that with God you can't do, Yeah, you know, because I've, I've seen it, I've experienced it. So mm. for me, it's like, that's who God is. That's what he does. Mm. I think probably a good question to maybe think through or share on is, mm. What would you say was one of the defining moments for you in your life? So, <laughs> so growing up, I was a bit of a, let's call it rascal, or my favourite current word is rapscallion. <laughs> Have you seen that video? <laughs> Where, I think it's like a fake Boris Johnson and he's yeah. chasing off, he's like, bloody rapscallions, that's my favourite <laughs> word right now. So I think growing up, I was, let's call it misguided or whatever it was, but mm. I was just acting up. Um, and I actually ended up getting arrested probably two or three times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Man yeah. like Tyler, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. So I'd, like, <laughs> locked up. <laughs> um, and, and it was just for like juvenile, like silly stuff, you yeah. know. And I, the last time I got arrested, I think I was probably 17, just about to be 18. Mm. And I just had this moment of clarity of, look, you're getting to the age now where if you continue doing things like this, mm. because I think the last one was because I was like, I was trying to be a smarty with my mouth, mm. right? And I said something that was conceived as, well, perceived as threatening to somebody, mm. which was actually fair. It, it, if you look at it in a certain way, it could be threatening, right? It wasn't <laughs> meant to be like that for me, yeah. but I could understand, right? Yeah. And when they ask you the questions, like, mm. you know, do you understand that this could be threatening and da 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 in that moment, I can't lie and say no, because actually I'm thinking, actually, yeah, mm. I can understand. Mm. But anyway, all that to say, in that moment, I just had this kind of clarity of, look, if you keep going this way, yeah, life is not going to end up well for you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really interesting, actually, because I think that's the start of where me trying to communicate better actually really started from. Wow. <laughs> like in terms of making sure that my words can't be perceived in that's a different powerful, kind of man. way. You know, and I think actually that's probably where a lot of that started from. Yeah. Mad. So, so for anybody that listens to the podcast, you'll know that that is something we talk about with Tony oh. all the time and how just the diplomat of the year. Every year like. <laughs> so trying to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's probably actually why. Because yeah. yeah, that was that was the last time I really got into any kind of trouble. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a really big turning point for me because when I was in secondary school, mm. I was, yeah, I was a rascal. But in college, I decided to turn it around. Mm. But I still had a little bit of that, that smart mouth streak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, still wanted to be that little bit, you know, rah, yeah, rah, yeah, rah. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, that that was like the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? So for me, there's, I've got two. Okay. <laughs> I think one of them was when um, me and one of my childhood best friends, we both were like really eager to learn how to drive. Mm. Um, and... What basically happened is my mum was at work, his mum was on holiday, and I know she's going to see this. And now she's, she's probably <laughs> All finally, the secrets are coming she, out. She's finally getting the confession that never happened when I was a child. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, basically we um, we decided to just, you know, take their cars and just go for a drive. Wait, both of you? Both of us, yeah. So Not I, even just one car? No, we took both of them. <laughs> you guys were going so, in. <laughs> Double and so, so yeah, so like, so we just went, uh, went for a drive and stuff and it was me in front, he was behind and then all of a sudden we see a police car behind him and so I'm panicking, like, I'm thinking like, I ain't trying to go to jail. Like, so how old were you? I was, I think maybe 15. Okay. 15, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I got to a corner, I thought, right, let me turn and then hopefully get a bit of space so that they don't end up following us. So I turned the corner, so I'm out of their sight. And I decided to put the floor, the the um, pedal down to basically create some space. He comes around the corner, tries to do the same thing. They eventually come around the corner as well. So they're still tailing us. Um, take another two corners, come back onto the main road. Long story short, they ended up putting on the sirens. And I remember praying like I'd never prayed before. <laughs> because at this point, he had actually, when we were out of sight, overtaken me. 
So they were now oh, behind now me they're behind you. when they put the sirens on. And so I prayed like, and maybe this was where my salvation journey really began <laughs> because I prayed like I never prayed before. And lo and behold, they, and these are the times when I was making those promises to God. God, if you save me, I will serve you the rest of my day. Here I am. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yes, yeah, so the police overtook me and they ended up pulling him over. Um, Cause he went praying, right? I don't know. <laughs> I can't vouch for him. We'll bring him on to the next video and see what he says. His, his account. But um, but literally, like, that moment for me, thankfully, the, the end of the story is that he, they were let off leniently. We were let off leniently. So what um, happened to you? Did they pull you over? They didn't pull me over because as soon as they pulled him over, I flew straight into the nearest car park I saw, parked the car up, jumped out of the car, locked it and ran. Because I wanted to run away from the car so that there's nobody that can stop me and say, oh, you were driving. Okay. Um, and so literally where I ran, I ran to the top of like the stairs of the park area and I could see everything that was going on with him and the police. Um, and I prayed for my friend as well. And so, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. No, legit. Like, <laughs> I was hoping that we didn't get in no trouble. And thankfully, um, they let us off lightly. There were no points, no ban, no nothing because... Um, leniency and the grace of God mm. came over that situation but I think the whole situation for me was one of those moments where I felt so close to because I'd always wanted to drive and I think I felt so close to having that taken away from me that it kind of brought back the seriousness of what would happen if I was to get pulled over and stopped and stuff like that as well so mm. after that long story short I ended up getting my license but the second defining moment the second one and I think this is probably the bigger one for me is Whilst I was in college, um, we I was studying law and we went on a trip to a Crown Court. Mm. And whilst we were there, they you know spent some time watching some trials and things like that. And then they took us down to, you know, the transfer unit vans mm. that they used to transport prisoners from the court to the um, prison. They basically took us inside of there mm. and they let us basically sit inside an individual transfer wow. unit, whatever you want to call it. And close the door. Now, the minute the door closed, I feel like I had one of those crazy moments with God. Because I was already doing like a bunch of silly things outside of that that I shouldn't have been doing. Right. And in that moment when they closed the door, I felt like I was really being transported from court to prison. Like I'd just been found guilty. And I remember that as the so many thoughts went through my head of regret or feeling like I'd wasted my life or feeling like, how did I get myself in this position mm. to the point where I think I had that realization kind of like what mm. you were saying about how, if I continue down the path that I'm going, this isn't going to lead anywhere it's good. Well. And I think it was in that moment, like I said, that it, it, def it just switched, something switched in me. And just after that as well happened to be a roughly about a three month period mm. in which I actually ended up surrendering to God fully. Mm. So that was one of the key defining key moments that God used for me. So yeah, two long stories, but very, <laughs> very, very defining stories yeah. in my life. So on your journey, yeah, have you had to deal with a lot of rejection or failure? Oh, plenty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go. <laughs> that rejection and failure like came in abundance, man. Okay. But I think probably one of the main examples that sticks out to me in my journey was when I was in my placement year. Mm. And literally, I I sent my CV to like sixty to eighty different companies. Wow! And I was literally I was hoping for an opportunity to get a placement that would pay me a salary mm. that I would be able to stack the money up whilst I'm living at my mom's house mm. and be laughing. Um, and so in out of sixty to eighty different companies that I tried to apply to, I got one callback. Wow! And the company offered me an interview. I went for the interview and I tanked in the interview, man. Like, I, I don't... It was... At that time, I don't think I'd understood the... I guess, bringing my faith fully and my confidence into an interview mm. um, to be able to deliver as well as possible. And so I remember getting in there and then feeling like, almost like... I felt like I shrinked back mm. because I felt like I didn't deserve to be there. Mm. Um, and I think it's just because the level of people that I was around is just like it just didn't seem like my environment I knew where I'd come from and so I felt pretty small in the room and so naturally when they're asking me questions rather than focusing on what like having have. the conversation yeah. and what I do have yeah. I was focusing more on 
the environment, trying mm. not to get things wrong, thinking that this is like a one in 80 chance. I need to make this. Otherwise, I've completely flopped. Like, I felt like the whole world was resting on my shoulders. Wow. And so I came across nervous. Um, and yeah, I remember after the interview, they gave me the call back to say I didn't get the job. And I did ask for feedback. I said, you know, out of the other candidates you interviewed, where did I place? And they actually said that I placed third. That's not bad. Um, which, yeah, in the grand out scheme of things, out of, out of five. That's good. Out of five, yeah. So, <clears throat> so yes, yeah, so I remember it being something that stayed with me. I kicked myself so much because I felt like on a normal day, I'm not that mm, kind of that a nervous kind of, person. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I think in terms of overcoming it, I just remember, I remember feeling like I never want to feel like that again. And I never want to waste an opportunity like that again. Mm. And so I'd guess through different experiences thereafter, I just stopped. I had to keep channeling my thoughts to stop thinking that I don't deserve to be somewhere mm. and to start looking at things more as God has opened this door. Let and so walk. I'm going to walk through with everything mm. that I've got. Mm. And so... So yeah, I I started rehearsing more for my interviews as well, mm. like getting my getting myself more used to telling my story, talking about my journey and and yeah, I think even to date, like the very last interview that I've done, which was for the company that I work for now, a few years back, I remember in that interview I made a decision that I was gonna be one hundred percent me and they're mm. gonna take it or leave it. Yeah. And so exactly. I didn't go in there and put on like a voice that wasn't authentic to who I was. Like I spoke about where I came from, East London. I spoke about some of the difficulties that we've experienced and not to just like throw it out there and rub it in their face, but it was kind of like, I thought, you know what, this embodies part of the journey that I've traveled mm. and some of the different things that I've managed to overcome and the journey ahead of me and stuff. And so I think it was that which really connected with my boss now who was interviewing me at the time because ironically he had a parallel story no way. um which hmm. when i shared my journey and shared my story and even spoke about my mum, single parent and this that, and the other mm. there were a lot of things he could identify with and i think he looked past the person and he saw me for me if you get what i'm saying like mm -hmm. he didn't look at me and define me by how i looked or maybe how i spoke but he he i guess he saw the good and the mm. the positives out of my journey so yeah I think what's really interesting is that even as you were talking, I was trying to think about for me, mm. did I have a lot of like rejection and stuff like that? Mm. And what I realized is that I didn't really have that much. Mm. But the reason I also didn't have that much is because I didn't put myself out there that much. Okay, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think for me, that was, I've never really thought of it that way before. Mm. Because when you're talking about, you know, you went out for like 60 to 80 jobs, yeah. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? Bro, I was trying to get paid. Yeah, but, <laughs> but that's what's bad for me, right? Is that I think there were jobs that I probably saw that I wanted and stuff like that. Yeah. But the follow through on some of those things that I really wanted, mm. I didn't really put it through. Mm. And sometimes I wonder, you know, actually opportunities come a lot, you know, but sometimes I wouldn't even really go for them. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's almost like I had an attitude of, I don't really want to try for something unless I really know I can get it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that's actually not that right. And I think, to be honest, yeah, this is why I used to, this, is, this was my approach with girls before, right? Is that you yeah. don't really want to approach someone unless you know that, like, it's they'll gonna talk be a w. to you. <laughs> yeah, you know? So that, for me, that, just even listening to you and thinking, but why, why is it that I don't have that much, like, rejection? And it, it was just like, it's because you didn't really put yourself out there that okay, much. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I think that, and I don't know if that's a cultural thing or not, if that's just a me thing, but, you know, it's like that hesitancy of putting yourself out there. Yeah. Um, I just realised that, wow, that's probably why. You know, because I think, I'd before I got my job, I'd, I wanted to apply for another one, but mm. I couldn't find the details of the woman I'd met. Mm. And so my company was the only one that I still had the details for. Yeah. And that's the only one I applied for. Wow. Right? Yeah. But it's like, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're talking about rejection stuff, I'm like, no, actually, I haven't actually put myself out there for that much stuff, okay. I think. Yeah. So, so yeah. I was in America at, um, at this university and 
the one thing I put myself out for there really was like the basketball team. Mm -hmm. But it's very different, right? Because I know that, so Dwayne Wade is my favorite basketball player. This is where Dwayne Wade went, right? So I'm not even really expecting to get anywhere. (laughs) Do you see what I mean? I'm just like, you guys let me be in the same place that Dwayne Wade played basketball. It was cool. So when I got there, I had no expectations. Do you see what I mean? I was like, let me just try it. At yeah. least I know where I sit because I know that I'm not going to make it all the way through. Mm. And then I made it through one round. And I, I thought they made a mistake. I was like, <laughs> I was like, me, you, you want me to, oh, okay, go to the next round. And then we all got cut. Yeah. But I, I kind of expected it. You know what I mean? It, for me, that wasn't rejection. I'm like, I made it through a round. I was, like, I was, I feel like I was meant to make it this far. Some, I was like, me? Slow me yeah. up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But those are the kinds of things where it's like basketball, where, you know, I tried out for England, where yeah. it's like, it's England. Of yeah. course, I don't, I'm not that good. So yeah. I don't expect it. But yeah. in general life, I can't really think of that much, mm. you know, but then I've also realized like, I need to put myself out there more. And that's what I actually say to people is like, putting yourself out there is good. Yeah. Right. So like even the experience that you had of going through that mm. and then coming out the other side and not getting it, mm-hmm. actually that's helped you because mm. that spurred you on. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, that's given you experience, that's given you feedback, that's yeah. told you that actually this is how I need to approach it. Yeah, yeah. But if you just play it safe, like I mean you don't really get that feedback because you're not putting yeah. yourself out there. It's true. But saying that, I think it's interesting hearing you say that because I wonder whether you I don't think you're from what I see of you now, mm. still that person. Because I nah. think you definitely now, like, dude, you launched Dunamis. Like, <laughs> talk about a risk. Yeah. And talk about not knowing, especially in the pandemic, if you haven't watched the video. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's going to be out yet or not. But make it's sure coming. you check it out. It's coming. It's coming. But you know <laughs> but, what, right? It's because there was a period where, so I used to, I used to drink, right? Mm. So when I had a drink, I'd be very confident. I yeah. talked to girls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And there was a period where I decided not to drink for a year. Yeah. And in that period, I decided like, okay, I'm going to conquer this confidence thing. Yeah. Right. Because I had a teammate and he said to me, embrace rejection. Yeah. I'm like, no, you're dumb. Like, <laughs> why would I do that? Like, you're yeah. actually dumb. Yeah. But then he broke it down for me and he was like, rejection can actually be quite a good thing. Yeah. You know, because it's feedback, you know, most people aren't even going to reject you. Like when you go for something, most people respond quite well. Yeah. So for about a year, I said, okay, every time I go somewhere new, I'm going to talk to a new girl that I don't know, not to like hit on her or anything like that, just to like introduce myself, you know, because that was my big thing. Like if I introduce myself to you and you reject me, like that's embarrassing. But bruv, I met so many good people by doing that. And I think that's where I really got over the thing of, oh, if I try it and it doesn't work out, it's bad. And that was probably, that was a few years before we met. So now I'm kind of like, I would try whatever. (laughs) You know, I put myself forward, it's cool. So yeah, for me, that was what really kind of broke that fear of rejection. Okay. Um, And just... I just really started just putting myself out there. So whether it's at work, you know, if there's opportunities to do something that I have never really done before, Mm. I try and put myself in those positions Mm. to be willing to take it. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen such good stuff come from that because what we don't realise sometimes is that a lot of people aren't actually willing to step forward and put themselves at risk. Yeah, for real. But actually when you do that, you know what they say about like high risk, high reward. Yeah. Right? It's so true. Yeah. And whether the reward comes in terms of it goes really, really well. Yeah. And you get lots of, you know, good praise for it and blah, 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 and recognition. Yeah. That's one reward. But another reward is the learning. For real. Right? Because let's say it goes really badly. So, like, I am... Um, so, I put myself forward to do this talk in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. And it was all filmed and stuff like that. And if it had gone well, it's yeah. great. Yeah. If it had gone really badly, at least I'd have had the video. I can see it. There were lots of people <laughs> to give tape. me feedback. Yeah, yeah. Exa- exactly. Game yeah. tape. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you see it with people like Michael Jordan in, in the thing about the last dance. Yeah. It was some of those failures that really drove him to really succeed and become who he was. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, do you know what? It's another thing that's linked to what you're saying that I think has really helped me in my journey is putting myself in those uncomfortable situations. Yeah like those places that are the environments that are not the same as the environments that I've grown up in yeah. or been used to and comfortable and around. Sure. Because like I've been in rooms where nobody else looks like me or nobody else speaks like me. Mm. And I've had to wrestle with the uncomfortability, mm. but I think also benefit from being in those rooms and in those places to mm. actually see how other people think outside of the huge, circle that I've grown up in. Huge, 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 and huge. that's something that I think massively has helped to expand my own thinking just throughout my whole journey 
No, I, I think that's so huge. And I think that's something that sometimes as black people we miss out on. Yeah. Because there is a comfort in your own people. Of course, yeah. Right. But I grew up in West Sussex. That's where I went to school. There yeah. ain't none of my people there <laughs> apart from my family. Right? Yeah. So for me, I've always been in that uncomfortable situation. Right, right. And I've gotten quite used to it. Yeah. You know, so I understand the different dynamics and stuff like that. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes where if we've grown up around our own people all the time, that's yeah. what we seek out when we Literally. get into different environments. Yeah. But actually, that's that sometimes limits us from progressing because yeah. what helps you to progress is your network, mm. right? And the people that you can interact with because it's some of those day-to-day -day interactions that you have mm. that help people to really remember you right. and to push you forward. Because I feel like when we were growing up, we were always told like, just facial books, do your work yeah. and it will stand for you. Yeah. It's not true. Yeah. Like you that, need yeah. to have the basis <laughs> of the work, <laughs> yeah. but there's this thing, it's called pie. It's something like about um, exposure and other things as well. And that's what gets you promoted. Mm. It's not just the work that you do because that's like the basic. No, it is. Yeah. Like you have to be good at your job, Yeah. but really it's stuff like exposure mm. and what people think of you and what people know about you. Yeah. That's really what helps you to progress. And yeah, yeah. if we're just kind of insular, then we're not really going to progress in that way. No, yeah, we have definitely. to expand our networks, you know? 100%. So I think maybe before we wrap up, this would be a good point to, to say what you would say to your younger self. Mm. Like, based on the experiences that you've had, the things that you now know mm. at the current stage you're at in life, mm. what would you say to the younger you? I would probably say, put myself out there a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I would definitely say, like, be better with my money. Like, understand what does that mean? What does that look like? Yeah. And actually be intentional. I would say probably be intentional mm. you know, in everything that you do, whether it's, you know, fitness or finances, family, mm. relationships, work just be more intentional because I feel like for a while I was just chilling. I was coasting. Yeah. Like I didn't have a plan. I was just <laughs> roaming around. Like, you know, so I would just say be more intentional. Yeah. Um, and yeah, put yourself out there more. Be willing yeah. to put yourself out there more. What about you? It's funny. I think my point's actually really similar. Okay. Go into more of those uncomfortable situations yeah. more often. Mm. Um, and, and don't feel inferior in those places either. Mm. Because I think maybe one of the things that I... Yeah, one of the things that I think I, I misunderstood when I was younger is that I almost felt like that whole thing of where I've come from and what I've been through mm. almost puts me at a disadvantage. disadvantage or a lower level than the other people in the room. Mm. Whereas I think when I got to the place where I just became 100% comfortable in realising that, look, you might not be the same as these people, mm. but your differences still mm. bring a new level of value that maybe they can't bring. Mm. And your differences aren't to make you any less than other people, but they're things that will bring out a unique set of skills and yeah. perspective yeah. that nobody else in that Everyone room might has. have. Um, sure. And I think if I understood that much sooner in life, mm. I think that, yeah, I could imagine that my trajectory might have been a, 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 little steeper, yeah. a little bit different. A little bit steeper, isn't it? A little bit steeper. Yeah, yeah. Because, I think... yeah. And I think for me, in some ways, it's good because your journey is your journey, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, we are where we are, but actually it can help, you know, because yeah. as you've been through those things, it's like you you understand it in a deeper way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, for sure. And I think for me, it's like, get to understand yourself earlier mm. because I think the sooner you can yeah, kind of really understand yourself, know your likes and your dislikes, know your strengths and your weaknesses build that emotional intelligence and mm. awareness for different situations mm -hmm. life just becomes so much easier yeah like so much it's still hard don't get me yeah, wrong yeah but it's a lot easier when you understand yourself and your triggers and you know yeah how to communicate those <laughs> <laughs> in, in an effective in way. an effective <laughs> in an effective way and i think my additional thing to myself would be take a personality test much sooner yes um, and frequently yeah uh, because yeah. it changes you change you yeah, change exactly, and you grow literally. yeah um, yeah, that would be the other thing. So yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for watching this video. If it's something that, you know, gave you some encouragement or maybe even provoked some thoughts in your mind, um, please drop it in the comments because we want to get to hear about your story and mm. maybe the different things that might be challenges for you where you are now. Um, and if you've got any questions or want any advice or anything, we're more than happy to, to share what we can from the experiences that we've had. 
Um, so yeah, just drop it in the comments. And if you've liked this video, please make sure you hit the like button to help us reach more people with the content that we make. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. My name's Arnold Reasons. I'm Tolly this Talks. This is Tolly Talks. This is Reason to Behold, and we'll be back with another one. Peace.